tread lightly. Keep it safe, play hard. Hello, I'm Simon Christie and this week we have the Colorado 7 out for some 4x4 rock crawling. Now we've got a lovely section of track up behind me as you can see and I'm really keen to see how the Colorado 7 will handle it. But before we lock into low range, let's take a quick look at this section of track. In this sort of terrain, you really need to take things nice and slow and carefully pick your lines. So I'll definitely be selecting low range four wheel drive. Now dry rocks provide plenty of traction, but it's these washouts between the rocks that cause all of the problems. And that's where I expect the Colorado 7 suspension and LSD to really shine. Let's give it a crack. Colorado 7 has a true low range transfer case. It's one of the key things that sets a real four wheel drive apart from the run of the mill SUVs and all wheel drives. For this hill, I'm selecting low range. It allows the vehicle to drive at a slower pace, giving us more control and it multiplies the torque, providing plenty of impetus over abrupt obstacles like these rocks and washouts. It's through this section here where you can really see the articulation of the suspension keeping the wheels on the ground and if there is any loss of traction it is the rear LSD that balances the force across the rear axle along with the onboard traction control that allows us to keep moving forward. Even in stock form the Colorado 7's positive approach and departure angles can easily be seen here. And with 231 millimetres of ground clearance, the Colorado 7 features 11 millimetres more than Australia's previously top-selling mid-size 4x4 wagon. And just in case that isn't enough, factory fitted sump guards protect the underside of the vehicle. Whether it's rocky outback cross-country work, slow rock crawling, or climbing and descending rough and rocky forest trails, the Colorado 7's smooth and powerful 2.8 turbo diesel engine and tough and modern 6-speed automatic with active select gearbox all combine faultlessly for easy and controlled rock driving. Well how easy was that? Looking at that first section of track when we arrived was a little bit of a worry but as you can see with the right sort of suspension travel, controlled torque and a true low range transfer case and picking the right lines, the Colorado 7 can easily handle those rocky trails and plenty more. Another greatly misunderstood and little thought of undercar component is the steering stabiliser or damper. Just like most original manufacturer's equipment, the factory steering damper is a trade-off between cost and performance, with cost being the major influence. On the other hand, and as we typically see with all good 4x4 products, a quality steering damper will be built more so for performance. So what exactly does a steering damper do? In short, it will stabilise and minimise bump steer, reduce and control lateral shock experienced by the tyres and assist in protecting the steering components, especially the tie rod ends. Any four wheel drive will benefit from a quality steering damper and for those with larger tyres, it's a must. In some extreme situations, some users may even require the fitment of two dampers. It is though critical to know that a steering damper is not intended to fix or mask any steering problems. 
If your steering wanders, vibrates, or feels loose or stiff, then get it fixed. The primary role of the steering damper is to reduce the impact, vibration, and shocking experience on normal rough roads through the steering components. When thinking of any accessories for your four-wheel drive, do your research, understand what you need and why, and shop for quality products, service, advice, support and warranty. Never shop on price alone. Held on the last weekend of October every year for the past seven years, this year's Riverland 4x4 Challenge is set to be the biggest and best ever. As the final round of the all-new Dirt Wars series, the 2013 Riverland 4x4 Challenge will see South Australia's best 4x4 competitors vying for final points during a tough weekend of challenging 4x4 motocross-style racing. Held at the Loveday 4x4 Park near Barmer in South Australia, this event attracts spectators from right across the country with its spectacular jumps and action-packed racing. The park itself offers extensive on-site camping, toilets and showers, plus a fully licensed bar. So for a fantastic weekend of high-flying 4x4 excitement, how about joining us for the 2013 Riverland 4x4 Challenge over the final weekend of October? We'd love to see you there. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Total recovery and extraction device, TREAD. Whether it's sand, mud, snow, rocks or any tough terrain, TREAD is the ultimate all-in-one recovery device. Designed and manufactured in Australia for rugged performance, TREAD will let you explore with confidence. Available in a variety of colours and two easy to use sizes, TREAD is the true Aussie traction board you've been waiting for. For more information, visit meanmother.com.au. Hi, I'm Andrew from DP Chip. We're looking at the new Holden Colorado 2.8 here. It's using the nice VM engine. It's been around for a very, very long time. And we're going to fit a DP Chip, and I'll just show you how simple it is to do. It's looking great at the moment. He's got all the goodies and gear on it now, but I guess it's probably getting a little bit heavy. So I know Simon's looking certainly for some more power. He's doing a lot of Ks, so I guess he'd be looking for some more economy too, if we can get it. We are out here in LD Station, right out in the outback, just to show you how difficult it is to fit one of these DP chips. Obviously, I haven't got many tools with me, so I'm not expecting to be a hard job on this thing. It's a simple plug and play system on the Holden Colorado 2.8. We just pull off the cover and we'll be there in a minute. Okay, well, I'll just come over to the engine here. The Holden Colorado, you just have to remove the oil filler cap. We are out here in the outback. Just be a little bit careful that there's no sand or any sort of grit around. And with a simple sort of one, two, three, we can get the cover off there in no time. Just make sure when you're sort of putting that back on again that they all clip back home. So I'll put that on for safety so we don't have any bits of sand or any sort of debris go in there. And if we look at the instructions, first thing we're looking for really is the common rail. 
So the common rail is a pretty simple thing to find on the engine. Got the good old fuel injection lines like diesels have always had. And in this installation, it's sitting up actually quite high up in the engine. So as soon as we've located sort of the injector area, the fuel lines and work back to the steel rail, the common rail, we'll get down in there, unplug it and get the harness connected up. Okay, well we've found the plug on the end of the common rail, a little bit of a squeeze. Before we know it, here it is in our hand. So it's a pretty simple, very simple plug to find. So once we've got that there, off, leave it to the side. We go to our little packet here for the DP chip, shake out our harness. And in fact, if you look at the actual plugs, the factory plug and our plug, we're actually utilizing factory plugs. So again, it keeps it a real simple, genuine style installation. So we're not cutting with wires and soldering in these common rail diesels and we're connecting onto the rail using factory plug. So we have a factory male and a factory female. So this one will go back onto the rail and this one here will go into the actual plug itself. So I'll just plug that in there like that. Locks home, pull it, nothing can come out. We're ready for the next plug. Okay, just clipped it in. That's pretty much it. Okay, we've got the harness on there now, so it's now time to plug the chip in. We'll pull that out. On the end of the DP chip harness is a pretty simple plug. You can't go wrong with it. So again, just simply push. These are just some light little tiny thumb screws. Just give them a tighten up just with your finger. And that's it, the chip's ready to go. What we'll do now is we'll just do a little bit of testing just for startup. Check some lights in the DP chip to make sure it's actually all working well and plugged in. You can see they're factory plugs, so you pretty much can't go wrong with the installation. We'll just confirm a few things when we start the engine and then we'll think about where we're going to mount it over in a nice place and put it away. So the car started up, all the lights are out on the dashboard. We don't have any lights on in the DP chip yet. So just for testing, we'll just give the engine just a couple of rev ups. We should have some LEDs come on. So we probably had those lights come on then, did we? Yep, everything's all good. So pretty much our test is successful. So once you're sure and you've done that, then we can find a nice place to locate the DP chip. Now, in these installations on modern four-wheel drives, usually we've got a dual battery system. So we've actually got a lot of wiring and probably a lot of additional accessories around in the engine bay. So I'm usually looking to somewhere probably near the battery. It might vary. So what we'll end up doing is just bringing the harness over here. We'll use a few cable ties to just secure it neatly. And then we'll just mount it up under here. Looks like a pretty good spot sort of under the battery bracket. Every DP chip is, uh, comes out sort of set and pre-tuned for the application. In this instance, it's got programming specifically for the 2.8 Colorado. It's a pretty proven and tried program we've been using in this now for quite a while. So, you know, pretty much since they first came out. And it's really a carry on again from this great engine. So with the pre-tuned program on the chip, it just means again that it's plug and play. You as the owner don't have to worry too much about anything else. Pretty much the installation's complete just for now. We've got a great airstrip just up the road here. We'll just take the vehicle for a quick revving on. What I'm looking at usually with road testing or any sort of testing is a bit of sort of foot flat type of driving and acceleration. I really want to give the engine a very good hard throttle and revving out. Make sure that everything works right through the operation without any safety modes kicking in. Because again, one thing with the DP chip, it's extremely safe. The type of tuning that we do works in sync with the vehicle's computer. So we're not bypassing things right down at the injectors. See, a lot of chips actually on the market go straight to the injector, and that's another way of tuning as well. But you actually bypass any of the safety features. So with the DP chip, we're working in sync with the factory computer. These modern diesels too, we're noticing some of the capacities actually coming down on some of the vehicles. So like on the Holden Colorado, they did have a three litre before. It's only a 2.8 litre now. I certainly don't think it means that the quality is any worse or the engine's going to last any less. On the contrary, these engines really are producing very high power. They sustain that power for an extremely long period of time, as long as they're serviced regularly. And I think it really comes down to the lifeblood of the engine, making sure you have good regular servicing and changing oil. And then these engines are going to last a very long time. The DP chip itself doesn't actually change the service interval. So stick to your original stuff. If you like to do it just by the book, do it by the book. But make sure you do regular servicing. 
So the DP chip's all about widening up torque and the operation of the vehicle. Sure, you get you know an overall gain in power, but it's in the day-to-day -day driving that you really notice the difference with the DP chip. Now, we've had some guys with some of the newer automatics, in particular these higher powered ones, even sometimes the new V6s and V8s, where they're finding not a real lot of difference between chipped and unchipped in 0 to 100 runs. Now, firstly, anything you do has got to be scientific, so a simple flick of the finger might be 0.5 of a second in accuracy from test to test. So I always say, put the chip in the vehicle, we've got special program for the job, drive it probably for the best part of a few weeks, you'll probably notice things already immediately, but if you want to, you've seen the simple unplug and plug in bypass plug, you can get the vehicle back to standard. And it's funny, sometimes people unplug the chip after they've had it in for a month or a few weeks even, go back to standard and then go, gee, I actually didn't really realise that it was actually going so well. So it's that day-to-day -day driving, rolling on the throttle, those sorts of things where you'll really sort of notice the difference. In automatics, probably with towing, you'll also be able to sort of maybe just keep down under that kick down point. So most of the new good diesels are running automatics. It'll be those areas that you'll probably find most benefit. Again, putting the foot down flat, these things go anyway. The revs go up very high to make maximum use of the horsepower. It's at those times where the DP chip's actually starting to cut back because it's at those high RPMs and high engine loads at very high exhaust gas temperatures can increase and again, our tuning is very safe. So we want to keep things as safe as possible. The DP chip ramps up, and as we come up towards red line, the DP chip's ramping back down to standard again. So everything's safe for the engine. So pretty much if we haven't had any lights or any buzzes or any bells or anything sort of kick in, pretty right to get back home, cable tie, and lock a few things up into position, and it's all done. We get back, we'll be able to hand this over to Simon, and with all the trips he's got coming up, I know he's got a busy calendar coming up very soon, He'll be able to give a good report on how the chip's going, give us some feedback, and hopefully he'll be coming up to our workshop where we can do some specialised tuning and fine tune the vehicle looking up for maximum. Because we've got to remember this vehicle's really been modified up for his show. It's carrying a lot of camera equipment and all the other accessories on. So uh, we get a chance, we'll probably meet again on one of the shows coming up. We'll see it sitting on our dyno. We can do a bit of fine tuning and talk further on some of the specifics of tuning diesels. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Do you need more from your four-wheel drive suspension? Designed for Aussie conditions, Superior Engineering has a suspension solution to suit any four-wheel drive. Mix and match from the widest range of specialty suspension components or opt for the latest in spring and dampening technologies. Throw in the widest range of 4x4 suspension accessories and Superior Engineering is your complete 4x4 and suspension specialist. Superior Engineering, it's engineered to be superior. For more information, visit superiorengineering.com.au. Warning, water in fuel is one of the biggest killers of diesel engines, but there is now a unique alarm system available that lets you know when there are dangerous water levels in your fuel system. WaterWatch is a simple and effective fuel alarm that offers LED and audible warning signals. Easily fitted, WaterWatch is inexpensive insurance for your vehicle. Avoid huge repair costs, ensure your motor runs clean and be warned of any water issues with the innovative WaterWatch. For more information, visit waterinddiesel.com.au. Hi, I'm Justin Walker, I'm from Newcastle. This is my 2010 SR5 Hilux. We've owned it since November. Bought it mainly to go beach fishing. Since November, we've put the lights on the front, the rack on the roof with the LED light strip. I've put a second battery in it for while we're over the beach with power in the back so the kids can watch movies while Dad's fishing. Future mods, I'd like to put some front and rear lockers in it give it a four inch lift and a couple of long range fuel tanks because we'd like to get it up to Fraser Island and do a tour of the Cape. Kids love going over the beach for a weekend. 
because we don't have a winch without having the bull bar, that's another thing we're looking at putting on in the future. We bought a set of the treads so we don't get stuck out there on our own on the beach. Next trip we'd like to go to Fraser Island, just trying to get a few things ready for that. We'd like to put a canopy on the back, give it a bit more storage. We've gone over the island, the kids love the beach. Announcements on the next Your Rig trip and how you could be the weekly rig will be made shortly. And this week's Your Rig has won. It's an electric blue span set snatch strap, a super mini booster 12 volt 180 amp hour jump starter, a full drive road atlas thanks to HEMA, plus a massive HEMA map of Australia, a comprehensive Holden 4x4 recovery kit, an ARB jacket, a can of ARB emergency survival socks, an ARB Ariel stuffed toy, an ARB 4B, a drink bottle and travel mug from ARB, two copies of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, two copies of Blitz Australia martial arts magazine, a copy of 4x4 Australia magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine, one of the new Oricom 5 watt handheld UHFs, a magnetic rifle rest from Eagle Eye Hunting, a Nava USB power cup, a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit for added inline filtration and protection, a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, a pair of smart scissors from Keesler Knives Australia, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, a Toyota Land Cruiser Legend DVD from Terrain Tamer, a Berrima diesel cap, Superior Engineering cap, Superior Engineering stubby holder, a Carry Boy cap, an emergency gear oil pack from 360 gearboxes and diffs, an emergency ration of Ocean Delight tuner and a pair of four-wheel drive TV small stickers. And it's all neatly wrapped up in an ARB carry bag. Thanks Simon Miranda and all the sponsors. We've had a great day here. Really appreciate the prize packs and look forward to getting out there and having some fun. Held once every two years, the Taupo 1000 is heralded as the biggest off-road race in the Southern Hemisphere. And for the fourth year in a row, the organisers are flying four-wheel drive TV over to capture all of the action for international broadcast. This 1000 km race is held within forestry blocks close to the city of Taupo, bang smack in the centre of the North Island of New Zealand. Last time the event ran, it attracted an unprecedented number of competitors with 88 vehicles stepping up to the challenge. This year, well over 100 have already registered for this prestigious event. A number of Australian teams will join a growing list of internationals heading for the Taupo 1000 this year, and we'll also see unequalled numbers of international spectators. So if you like your off-road motorsport, tough, fast, intense and dirty, how about joining us for the 2013 NZ Taupo 1000? It's on in mid-September and we'd love to see you there. It's now time to announce the prize winners from Series 36 of 4 Drive TV. Up on offer is a 12-month subscription to Dirt Comp Magazine, a full recovery kit from Spanset, a pair of the Ultima 225 driving lights in halogen from Nava and a $500 gift voucher from ARB. Let's now see who the latest winners are. And taking home the Dirt Comp 12 month subscription is Jack Faulkner from Burradu in New South Wales. The winner of the Spanset Outback Recovery Kit is Edian Coote from Hampton in Victoria. Winning the Ultima 225 halogen driving lights from Nava is Emma Butterworth from Waikiki in Western Australia. And the big ARB $500 gift voucher goes to Alistair Lodsman from Finden in South Australia. Congratulations to all of the winners and for more details jump on the 4 Drive TV website. When you're travelling in these remote areas, packing your vehicle is important. Just a couple of quick tips today. In the back of our Holden Colorado ute, we've got installed a bed slide. It gives us quick and easy access to everything in the tub. That's the halfway point. It will actually come out further again, but that's where we've got it mounted at the moment. We've got a fridge. A high quality fridge is absolutely paramount to keep your food, your drinks, any food you're carrying can be stored safely in there. Not just cold, but stored safely and securely. 
It's mounted down to the bed slide, so it is secure. And importantly, we've powered up the back of the ute so we do have high quality, high amperage plugs to run the fridge and other accessories in the back. We're also running these space cases. Now, interestingly enough, these hard, heavy duty space cases are water and dust proof. So perfect for outback and four wheel drive touring. And one final tip for the guys who do have utes. We've got the carry boy canopy and in the front of the carry boy canopy are two sliding windows. Now if you keep those sliding windows slightly open, they actually pressurise the cabin and go a long way in assisting to keeping the dust out of the back of your tub and keeping all of your gear clean. Well I hope those few hints will help you out on your next outback trip. But one thing to remember, whether you pack the car or the wife packs the car, lay out everything that you need and you'll probably be able to get rid of about a third of it. Pack only the things you need, pack light, have a safe trip. We'll see you next time out there on the tracks. Don't know what this is, but I'll have one. Hi, my name's Robert Cole. I'm in Abbey Ron. Uh, up here in a pretty well much standard Hilux. We're Team Salt and Pepper. This is our fifth year up at Tough Truck. Trying to do a bit better than previous years. Did a couple of conversions to the truck, the VP motor. Mud Run's not a big fan, but the Navi's gonna get out in the mud if we get stuck, so that's probably a good idea. Up here to please the crowd and see if I don't give me mum a heart attack. Hope to have a good weekend up here. Try not to put it over on a cruise, but if that happens, as long as I'm on camera, it doesn't really care. Well viewers, thank you for tuning in for another fantastic episode, another series of 4 wheel drive TV. We'll be back bigger and better in a couple of weeks with the final series for 2013, so make sure you keep an eye out, check the website for details. Congratulations to the prize winners, thank you to our sponsors and all of our viewers for supporting the show. I'm Simon Christie, tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks.